Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome everyone uh, in this sanctuary and also those who are uh, online. And uh, here at Wesley, we foster a sanctuary culture by creating a safe environment where all feel welcomed, loved, accepted, valued, and affirmed for who they are through intentional practices such as empathy, compassion, generosity, hospitality, and inclusion. Okay. Uh, if you are on Zoom, uh, please register your attendance by recording your name and uh, names of those participating in worship with you in a chat addressed to a meeting host today, who is uh, Marjorie Ness. Okay. Uh, for those who are in this sanctuary, uh, please fill out an attendance slip and put it in the offering plate uh, during the collection of offering. And also, please uh, remember to wear uh, your name tags, okay? Uh, there's a couple of announcements. Uh, harvest is the next Sunday, October 9th. And uh, today uh, we have the, uh, breakfast, but the, uh, because of the uh, uh, brew hall uh, usage uh, after uh, noon, uh, please have your food by uh, 11.30 and uh, remain uh, until noon. Okay. Also, uh, today is the last day to order uh, next year's offering envelope. Okay. And uh, I was uh, noticed that uh, some of our church members park their cars uh, at the Unitarian Church's parking lot on Sunday morning. Uh, as you know, the, uh, we should not do that because they also have the, their service and the priests do not park your car on Sunday uh, at the, uh, the Unitarian Church's parking lot. Okay, thank you. And for other announcements, uh, please check the bulletin insert to our news and announcement under the resource tab of the church website. Okay, thank you. Please stand for our call to worship. We worship God in, with a clear conscience. We proclaim the good news of God for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. God gave us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished the death and brought life. We hold to the good news in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. We guard the good treasure entrusted to us with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Our opening hymn is God of Love and God of Power, found in the United Methodist Hymnal number 578. We will be singing verses 1, 3, and 4, followed by our praise songs.
Please be seated. Our prayer for World Communion Sunday is printed in the bulletin. Jesus Christ, Lord of the Church, we rejoice that you have formed your people into one body comprised of believers of every race and nation. Your salvation has reached the ends of the earth and to all generations. We praise and thank you that your gospel has reached us and that our voices will join those of many languages this day to proclaim your praise. Accept our praise, purify our hearts, Instruct us in your word, feed us at your table, and visit us with your spirit, that we may follow in the ways of faith to the glory of God the Creator. Amen. Okay, this is children's time. Please come forth. Have many? Okay. I saw a couple of others at the pool hall before the service. Where are they? Okay, come here. Okay, take a seat. Okay. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Okay, you may wonder what I have today. Your mom's not gonna like this. I have a bag of candies, okay. But I'm gonna place this candy bag here. And, okay, I need a volunteer to get that bag. Wanna do that? Okay. So go get it. Go. Wait a minute. So if you are only your hand, how are you going to get there? Yeah, but you need a finger to pick it up. If you are just a hand, you need the arm to stretch out. OK. If you have everything there, but still you need a leg to go there, is it? So, but the, without your feet, how are you gonna go there? Yeah, but also you may need your eyes to see where you are going, isn't it? And even though that we have everything, still we need the brain to function, is it? So, please take a seat, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But th these are just a few parts of our body. But the bottom line is that our real body have many more and they must work all together. So today is uh, we call it World Communion Sunday. Does anyone know the, what communion means? Communion. Okay. Communion is a word that means we all are one group and share together. As Christians, we are a community. It's one community. We are in communion with other Christians, not just in our own church, but with people in churches all over the world. So all the churches today, they have the communion to symbolize we are just one body of Christ. So Paul said, 
being part of church makes us like different parts of the body, like fingers, hand, arm, leg, feet. And the parts may look differently and work differently, but each of them is important. We don't want to give up any part of our body, is it? The body needs every single part to work. Okay, just like you need all the parts to go and get the bag of candy, is it? Okay. Would you join me in prayer? Okay, let's pray. Creator God, help us to remember we are all connected in Jesus Christ. We are all part of one body in your church. We need each other. We pray in Jesus' precious name and all God's children say, Amen. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll give this back and you can share during the, okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, now ushers uh, come forward and collect our offerings.
Holy God, we humbly present these offerings in recognition of the grace that you offer us each and every day. You have endowed us with great bounty. Today, we return a small portion of this bounty to you as an expression of our gratitude and commitment. Bless these gifts and empower us be in faithful service to you and our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Uh, please be seated. Uh, I have one uh, prayer request. Uh, uh, Dorothy Adams uh, fell and uh, was hospitalized, and now she is transferred to K1, uh, the rehab in uh, Milbury, uh, Dorothy Adams. Uh, please keep her uh, in your prayers. Okay? As we prepare our heart and mind to pray, let us sing together Care's Chorus. join me in prayer. Loving God, you are the hope of all who seek you and the joy of all who are found by you. Find us as we pray. Wherever we have been, whatever we have done, find us and gather us back into your love. Grounded in you, make us love enjoy and praise you. Merciful God, we confess our shallowness and selfishness. We regret the kindness we hold, the opportunity not taken, the high idea betrayed, and the faith denied. For the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Please forgive us, cleanse us, amend us, and restore us. Put our past behind and guide us to face the future with confidence and thanksgiving. Encourage us to turn our gratitude into firm faith and our faith into deeper compassion and our compassion into doing good to those around us. Gracious God, you love us, listen to us, and answer to us. We hold before you the millions suffering from floods and hurricanes in Florida, South Carolina, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Nigeria, and Pakistan. 
We pray for your children who are dying through drought in West Africa and South America. Open our eyes and hearts to their sufferings and help us to provide food and medical supplies for them. We also remember all those struggling to survive and longing for peace. We pray for all women challenging the deep-rooted injustice, often at the cost of their lives, particularly in America, Iran, India, Saudi Arabia, and Afghanistan. We pray for our family and friends who suffer from disease or illness, especially Dorothy, Bill, Marilyn, Alice, Joseph, and all who are in our prayer list and those we pray for in our hearts now. God of compassion, grant that your love may reach out and that your healing and comforting mercy pour upon all who suffer now. Gracious God, we offer these prayers through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please stand as you're able to in body or in spirit for their gospel reading. The scripture reading for this morning is from the gospel according to Luke chapter 17 verses 5 through 10. I will be reading from the inclusive version. The apostles said to Jesus, increase our faith. Jesus replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say this to a mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to someone enslaved to you who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank that person for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Jesus is uh, on the way uh, towards Jerusalem and uh, talks endlessly about the life of discipleship. He told about uh, hospitality, welcoming and helping strangers, seeking lost sheep and lost coins, prodigal son, and unfaithful servant. Last Sunday, we heard the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Then, in the first four verses of Luke chapter 17, right before today's given text, there are three teachings related to our concerns for the little ones, the ways we hurt and sin against each other, and the call to forgive. Now the disciples cry out, increase our faith. Why? The reason is that Jesus has just asked the disciples to do something they know they cannot do. 
Jesus tells them, it would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. He continues, if a person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. No wonder the disciples were crying for increase their faith. Perhaps they could forgive seven times in a lifetime, but seven times a day? The disciples are more like us than we realize. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are willing to do what is reasonable and even exceptional to follow Jesus. They have left their homes, their jobs, and their families to travel with their master. They are being asked to assume leadership positions in the community of Christ. No one wants to end up dying in the sea. Now Jesus begins to ask impossible tasks, and they do not know how to do them. As a matter of fact, they know they cannot do them. Moreover, for much of the Gospels, Jesus has questioned the faith of the disciples. You have such little faith, he says quite often. Where is your faith? Jesus asks on the stormy sea. So it is very natural that they cry out, give us more faith, increase our faith, so we can succeed at all of this. They want a little of the magic formula that Jesus used to work the power of God. They want him to give them some superhuman power to do what they know in their hearts cannot be done. In short, they want to be transformed, but they do not really believe they can. The disciples' cry is familiar to us. Whenever the church is faced with challenges, we say we need more. We need more resources. We need more planning. We need more people. And we need more of everything before we can possibly do what Jesus calls us to do. We all know just how the disciples are feeling. Our feeling of need more is not just for our personal life or for the church. There are so many needs in the world. There is so much conflict. People are anxious and scared. There is massive financial debt over our nation. Economic, health care, racial relationship, immigration, military, political, and judicial systems. All of our systems are in some kind of crisis. Politics is very important, but not many politicians seem accountable to the people. There is an ideological war in our society. Nasty, irresponsible, Demagoguery and the polit uh, political instigations shake our society. I do not need to say anything more. We all know. We all experience, suffer, and being tired of. We are tempted to say, give us more faith. Increase our faith. What else would we say? 
I remember that before my ordination, I had one-on-one -on -one meeting with my bishop. And he asked me whether there is anything he could pray for me. My prayer request was that God would grant a little more faith to me so that I can become at least a little more faithful servant. I also prayed for more faith quite a long time. Later on, I realized I had been wrong. Why? Jesus responds that we do not need to increase our faith. We just need a tiny bit of faith. If we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, it can empower us to do great things. Which is to say, unless we have no faith, we already have enough. We have enough. What we have is sufficient. Mother Teresa said, our calling is not to do great things, but to do small things with great love. We do not need more faith. We need to use the faith that we have. Then Jesus says, we are servants. Yes, that's right. But how he explains is surprising, even cruel, taken by itself. Whatever we do, in whatever moments are at the request of our master. Even when we are exhausted from doing all we can, more will be required of us until we are spent. Then we are rewarded with what we are due for the day. Jesus concludes today's teaching. So, you also, when you have done all that you, are, you were ordered to do, say we are worthless. We have done only what we ought to have done. God as a taskmaster is not necessarily the image that would inspire me. It is certainly not the image I would expect out of God who is said to love humanity deeply. And the Christ who called all of his disciples to life-giving, self-giving love. But there is something more to the question that Jesus asks. Who among you would say to your slave, come here and take your place at the table? We assume that the answer is none of them. But consider Jesus himself. What did he do on the night before he died? Jesus, the master, stripped to his waist and served his disciples by washing their feet. Then he served them a meal where he was both host and servant. Both distributor of the feast and the meal itself. His own body and blood were their food. The bread was broken on a cross and the blood ran down for their sake. Jesus asks, who among you would say to your slave, come here and take your place at the table? We know the answer. Christ, you know, you do that for us. It is this love that offers such service to us and inspires such service in us who are his disciples. It is for this very offering of ourselves that faith is required. It is not for us to get something, but for us to give something. It is faith that embraces our life 
and holds us in our times of suffering and weakness. It is faith that gives us courage and sustains us even when we are required to give more than we thought we had. To me, faith is the power that enables me to face the reality, the reality of life, the reality of the world, no matter how harsh or ugly they are, without fear. Because I know that what my Christ, my Lord, has done, is doing, and will do for me. Because I know that to whom I belong. God grants faith to the body of Christ. God spent God's self completely for us. And in doing so, inspires us to trust God's serving way as our way. Therefore, the faith is strength for our serving, not strength for our wanting. When we think about how we can change ourselves, the church, the society, and the world, we always despair. But let us remember, it is not about us. It is about God working through us. All we have to do is open ourselves a little, and God does the rest. We only need faith the size of a small grain. We need a small crack in our frozen hearts, and God will transform us. And God will transform the world through us. Our Christ says gently and confidently, you already have enough faith. Open yourself. Put it into practice. We do not need more faith. We need to use the faith that we already have. Trust what we have. Trust what we have been given. Trust our Christ Jesus. He works in us. He works through us. Today, we affirm our faith at his gracious table. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, if you don't have the communion elements, please raise your hands. Our shirts will bring it to you. And also, please turn to the page 13 of the United Methodist Hymnal for Communion Liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, 
gave thanks to you, gave it his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. For your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on this gift of bread and wine. Make them before us, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ. Amen. This is cup of salvation. Amen. Please stand in body or in spirit and let us sing My Faith Looks Up to Thee, found in United Methodist Hymnal number 452 and Shalom.
your breath. Go now. Dear friends, go now to relying on the power of God and use the faith that you already have. Continue to offer yourselves in faith. May God give you grace, mercy, and peace. May Christ Jesus lead you into life and faith. May the Holy Spirit live within you and renew good gifts within you. The grace of Christ the love of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.